Hi everyone, it's Anya from Cooking With Plants and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I'm going to show you how to make oil-free popcorn in a savoury way and also a sweet way. This is a plant-based snack that's actually healthy and good for you. So I'm going to show you how to make it either way. So if you're having a salty snack attack or you're having a sweet snack attack, then this will satisfy those cravings. Let's get into the recipes. Cooking with plants, vegan made easy. Now I'm not going to use specific measurements today, I'm just going to eyeball this and that's how I usually make my snacks. So I want to give you some ideas on how you can cook your popcorn and then ideas on toppings that you could put on and how to make them actually stick and hold on your popcorn without using oil. So first up, I've got some corn kernels and I'm just heating up a pan to medium heat. So you can use any pot that has a lid or if you wanted to put a plate on top to hold it and close it off to allow your popcorn to cook, then that's perfect as well. But I'm just bringing this pan up to a medium heat and then just putting in probably, I don't know, a fourth of a cup to half a cup of corn kernels. And then I'm just going to put that lid on and I'll keep an eye on this and I'll give it a bit of a shake every now and then just to distribute the heat and get those kernels popping. Shake, 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 shake your popcorn, shake your popcorn. <laughs> so once you hear that popcorn start to pop, just keep shaking, keep the lid on and just listen until it stops and slows down and then your popcorn will be ready to take off the heat. Now I'm also going to do another batch. I'm just putting into a glass container. I'm just going to cover that with a some type of plate and I'm going to put that in the microwave for a couple of minutes. So I'll show you that when it's done as well. The kernels that I did in the microwave are done as well. You can see they're nicely popped. There are a few unpopped ones in there. I probably could have left it in there a little bit longer. But I like the way it actually pops in the microwave because it's just very round and puffy. Sometimes in the pan, depending on the heat or depending on how old your kernels are or the water content of the actual kernels can also affect the way they puff up in the pan. So the microwave is probably my preferred way, but if you prefer the stove top, then these are two versions of making it oil free. You can also make it in an air fryer, turn a container upside down over the top of a smaller container and then let it pop and you will have popcorn that way as well. But this is just the base and now I'm going to show you how to make the coatings so they stick and taste absolutely delicious. Okay, so first up I'm going to make the savoury version and for this I'm just going to plug in my small tri blender. Okay, and then I'm just going to add some savoury things to my blender and pulse them up because if they're small and a loose type of savoury um, coating, then it's going to stick much easier than if you're using chunkier things like coarse salt and that type of thing. So I'm going to just add a couple of tablespoons of nutritional yeast. in there. This will actually give it a delicious cheesy flavour similar to the flavour that you get on movie popcorn. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So next up I'm putting a little bit of white pepper. I just love the taste of white pepper. It gives a peppery taste but also a little bit of sweetness which is a great combination with the rest of these ingredients. And then I'm also going to add in a little bit of turmeric powder. So turmeric's not only healthy for us, but it'll give this a nice yellow colour, a buttery colour. So that's amazing too. Then I've got some garlic salt. So you could just use garlic powder if you don't want to use any salt. Or you could use salt separately and some garlic powder or some garlic granules. So I'm just adding that in maybe a good couple of teaspoons there. And then I've also got some onion flakes. But again, you could use onion powder as well or dried onion 
granules. Might as well use the rest of that up. Ah, already smells good. Okay, so that's all I'm blending up for this. So you can do any savoury combination that you like. You could do Mexican flavours. You could add some Italian herbs into this if you wanted a herby type of popcorn. So whatever flavours you like, just get adventurous and make smaller batches and have a little play around with this. So I'm just going to blend this up into a powder. <laughs> Great seasoning that's going to go onto the savoury popcorn, but how do we make it stick? <laughs> I now need to plug in my pan again and I will show you. Okay, so I'll turn this back onto medium heat. I've got my popcorn ready, I've got my coating ready, and what I've done is I have actually drained a tin of chickpeas and just used the brine from that. So uh, every time I have chickpeas I keep the what's called aquafaba, the liquid, and you can use this for all sorts of things. You can whisk this up into a meringue type, um, fluffy egg type substitute, all those types of things. So today I'm using it to make the buttery oily coating for the popcorn. So I'll just put this into the pan and I'm going to add just a touch of vinegar. I like the taste of vinegar on my, on my popcorn. So adding in a little bit of this and just let that cook for a few minutes on a medium heat and then it'll be ready to go as our buttery coating. By adding that vinegar in, it can take away a little bit from that bean flavour that the chickpea brine can have as well. If you prefer your popcorn a little bit more salty, then you could also put a dash of salt into this mixture as well. But because I've already got the garlic salt in here, I'm not going to add any extra salt to this. But the preference is totally up to you. And like I said, if you want to leave the salt out altogether, by all means do. But as you can see, this actually looks like melted butter but without actually using the butter. Okay, so this was about three to five minutes of cooking. Okay, so let's put this together. I'm just gonna pour some of this over the popcorn. Oh, and you can hear exactly the same effect as you would have from melted butter. And then I'm just going to pour some of this seasoning over as well. Not all of it, I haven't got much, much popcorn there, I'm just showing you the effect. And then just give that a toss around and these are ready to go. I might even add some more of my other popcorn into this. Oh. Mm. Crunchy, delicious, so tasty. Mm. This is amazing. Give that a try, it's a really good way to make your seasoning stick. So it's time for the sweet. And how exciting is this? Because in the afternoons I sometimes get peckish and I want a sweet treat. And this is a healthy version of some popcorn that you can make and it's very quick and easy to make. So I've got the bowl of my popped popcorn all ready to go. I've been soaking two medjool dates that have been pitted and I've just soaked them in a tablespoon of lemon juice just to soften them up a bit and it also gives a little bit of tang. Now I'm going to add a few other mix-ins and then gradually blend this in my small tri-best blender because I don't want to be adding too much extra liquid and I've also got a little bit of coconut water here just to loosen the mixture a bit and turn it into a date caramel if you will and that will then go on top of the popcorn and be baked in the oven. So if I had some maple syrup, I would probably use maple syrup in place of the coconut water just because it's a little bit more sticky and tends to hold a little bit better and doesn't add too much water content into this mixture, but I don't have it. So today I'm going to use coconut water. So just get creative and experiment. Like I said, popcorn is very cheap. This is an inexpensive treat that you can make for yourself at any time and have a play around with the flavors and how to get things to stick and the textures that you like 
it's really fun to do and like I said it's a healthy fun snack and it's delicious okay so to this I'm going to add some vanilla probably about half a teaspoon's worth then I am adding in some cinnamon I absolutely love the taste of cinnamon and I'm not measuring any of this I'm just going by whatever I feel is right for today and then just a touch of nutmeg it just feels like holidays really <laughs> getting in early and then some ginger powder which I haven't actually opened yet and I've also got some allspice if you've got a pumpkin spice mix that's ready to go, that would be a simple way to do this as well. And then just a touch of cloves. Again, those holiday flavours are coming out. Alright, and then I'm just going to blend this up. And like I said, I'll keep adding a little bit of the coconut water just till I get to a pouring consistency. As you can see, it's still a little bit chunky, so I'm going to add a little bit of that coconut water. Just a tiny splash. And blend again. Okay, I've just got my spatula here so I can scrape this out. So it's still reasonably thick, but it's creamy and I'm actually going to mix it through the popcorn now. I'm actually going to mix this with my hands because it's much easier and much more fun. So this could be a great recipe to do with kids. If you have children or grandchildren, get them in the kitchen, get them involved and get them excited about cooking. Oh, that smells amazing. All those holiday spices smell so good. Okay, I'm going to transfer this out onto a baking tray that's been lined with some non-stick parchment paper and then I'm just going to heat my oven to about 180 or 180 degrees Celsius or um, around 320 Fahrenheit and then I'm going to bake that for about 15 minutes 20 minutes until they've gone a little bit more golden and crunchy and then let it cool and I'm going to be ready to taste these because they smell so delicious I'll be back after they're baked. Okay, so these have come out of the oven and I've managed to actually burn them a little bit because I was doing some other things. And they have turned out a little bit darker than I would like. So keep an eye on yours and depending on your oven setting, etc. Somewhere between 10 and 15 minutes should be enough to crisp them up. And then just let them sit for a while to cool a little bit as well. But they are crunchy and they are sweet and delicious. And like I said, I would normally use more of a maple syrup base and then add those spices in. But dates and the coconut water work just as well. And I have been eating the savoury version as well. This is actually my favourite. It's just so buttery and delicious. I am a savoury girl. I do prefer savoury over sweet. So whichever way you want to go, give it a try and have a, have a play in the kitchen. Experiment and let me know what you think. If you have anything in particular you'd like me to make, please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Or if you make this and want to give me some feedback, please leave that below as well. Also, I'd love to see you over in my Facebook group where we share recipes and ideas and tips and tricks for a plant-based lifestyle. And if you're struggling with what to eat for your meals, I have a free seven-day meal plan down below that you can download straight to your phone or your computer to get started with what to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. So happy snacking, happy eating, and I'll see you for the next recipe. Bye for now. Mm.